Hi, this is Dr. Nikki, and I am here with my, one of my new favorite tools, the beaded number line. You have to have this. If you have nothing else in your toolkits, have a beaded number line. There's so many things that you can do with um, this with. So let's start with kindergarten. In kindergarten, you have, um, you, it's always got 100 beads. Some people are making it up to 120 now because a lot of state standards go up to 120. But then you take your clothespin and the kids count. And you want in kindergarten to know how, how to skip count by tens. So the kids go 10, and then they go 20, and then they go 30. They clip, right? So then you have, the kids can say, oh, 10, 20, 30, 40. It teaches them the quantity. So that's what you would do with it in kindergarten, really just to show the kids what 100 is, to look at what 100 is, and then to skip count by 10s. That's really what I use in kindergarten. You can also use it to, to count up to, to, to use the teen numbers, like 10 and 1 is 11, 10 and 2 is 12, like that. But I really use something else more for that. But to skip count by 10s, I would definitely use this in kindergarten. In first grade, it's phenomenal because it teaches the kids what 100 looks like. It is also great for place value in first grade because you teach the kids, okay, 21 is two 10s and a 1. This is 21. Or you teach the kids, well, let's see what 37 is. How many 10s and how many 1s? This is 10, 20, 30, right? And then 7 more. So the kids see 37 has 3 10s and 7 1s. Great for place value. This is absolutely phenomenal for place value. So teaching kids 10s and 1s. And then you teach kids how to count. In a lot of standards, kids are learning how to count with... Um, a, two, a double digit number and, a, and then you add a single digit number. So you would say things like, well, what is 42, let's say 42 plus nine, okay? And then the kids would add nine more. So they would know that's 42. So that's eight, nine. And now we have 42 plus nine more. Well, 42 plus nine is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 51 right? So that is how you would teach the kids to add a single digit and a double digit. And you're not really getting into the regrouping so much, but you're getting into what does that make and looking at strategies. So the kids, w you would use that for that. Now, um, then you go to second grade. So second grade, this is phenomenal because not only do you do the place value, you know, how many tens does 57 have, how many ones does 57 have, but then you also start doing a lot of those strategies that we often try to teach kids on an open number line and we're asking kids to kind of cognitively make these stretches that they don't really understand what they're doing. You teach it first on the beaded number line and then you go to the open number line. So for example, if I want to add uh, 29 and 51, we tell kids a lot of different strategies. One of the things we tell them is to round the 29 up to 30, to take that one from 50 and put it with the nine so we'd have 30. So the kids can actually see that. This is 29. So to make it easier, I could just add this one and make it 30. And then instead of adding 51, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, one, I would just add 50. So the kids can kind of see that adjustment. It's kind of the physicality of what we're doing and the kids can see that or we say things like okay we have 60 and we want to subtract 22 that's a really kind of difficult concept for kids with the regrouping and stuff but now they can see oh i have 10 20 30 40 50 60 and i'm gonna take away 22 i'm gonna take away 20 and two how much do i have left i have 10 20 38 left so you can do some things in terms of teaching kids strategies. You can also teach kids about counting up. So say we have, you know, 34 plus 27. You teach the kids, okay, well, why don't you start at 34, 10, 20, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34. And now we're going to count up 27. So we know this is six, this is seven. Or you could have the kids say, well, why don't we count 20 like we do when we're doing the open number line. So we're at 34. And then we're going to go to 44. We're going to count 10, right? And then we're going to go to 54. And then we're going to add that 7 on, right? So you can teach kids how to count up the number line as well. So there's just instead of, instead, and, you know, that's one of the things that Vanderwell said. When we're teaching kids how to subtract, 
that we teach them harder addition, right? If, we, if, if it's really difficult, that they should think addition rather than subtraction uh, going back because counting back is very error prone. So you want to teach kids how to also count out. Um, so the beaded number line is really terrific for a lot of strategies that you want your kids to have. So think, how do I teach kids those addition strategies like compensation or like grouping the nine and the one or like rounding the seven to the nearest 10 and then counting on? You tell the kids, okay, we have, uh, let's say we have 27 and we're going to add 19. So now the kids can say, well, you know what? First, I'm going to, I have 27 and I'm going to add 10 more to make 37. And then I'm going to add 10 more to make 47, right? And then I added one too many because I was supposed to only add 19. So I'm going to put one back so that I've only added 19 now. So all of those strategies that you want the kids to do on the open nine, jump ahead and then count back, all of that stuff you do with the beaded number line because the kids can concretely see what they're doing. It builds the concept before you go to open number line. This is one of the best tools. If you only have one tool in your toolkit, make sure it's this one. Now, building it, okay. In K2, when you're building with your kids, in kindergarten and first grade, just to have them build, have to have, parents build them uh, or, or, you know, um, your assistants in your classroom to build them or kids that are, you know, volunteering from the high school, have them build them. Now, if you're in second grade, build them, take four aspirin and build them with the kids. Do not attempt this whole class. Only have a few kids build them at a time. But the, if the kids build them in second grade enough, then they understand the structure of what they're doing. And so, um, and then when, in terms of how do you build them, I would go to Walmart and I'm not Walmart. I would either go to Walmart and get the GIMP or I would go to Lakeshore because you can order these strings. They're just shoelaces for like $7. You get 144 of them. So that's what I would definitely do in terms of how, you know, what to use to build them. And um, so that's all. I would just say, and there's also a virtual one that you can get online. So absolutely include this in your toolkit this year. This will really change how your kids understand the structure of numbers. Happy mathing. Thank you.